imagine me and you, and you, I do. It's just my little trapezoid. I love you so. I'm... Oh, hi there. Just hanging out with me and my trapezoid. One of my favorite shapes. I call him Mr. Trappy. So say hi to Mr. Trappy. Um, Trappy says hi back. So, one of my favorite shapes is the trapezoid. And, Nigel, help. Help! Did you hear that? Sounds like someone needs help! This sounds like a dog for... Nigel! The Math Explorer! Awesome! Math guy! Awesome! Math guy! Awesome! Math guy! Awesome! Math guy! The Math Explorer! Nigel! I'll solve your problems. And I'm a math guy! Come along! Oh. <laughs> Come along! It sounds like the sound is outside in the hallway. Follow me. Come on. Come on. You gotta keep up here if I'm gonna save the day. Huh. Hello! Hello! False alarm! Back under the room with the trapezoid. Trapezoid! Oh, trapezoid! Wait! <gasps> oh no! My trapezoid is gone! Where is Mr. Trappy? Oh, looks like there's a note. Come along! Come along! Let's read it. If you want to see your trapezoid again, you must follow. The clues. Sounds like a challenge. <laughs> <coughs> oh no! Sounds like Mr. Trappy has been kidnapped! <gasps> You're supposed to sound shocked. Alright, so I'll say that one more. Let's try this again. I'll say that again and everyone's gonna go, <gasps> It sounds like the trapezoid, Mr. Trappy, has been kidnapped! <gasps> Much better, good job. All right, now, what kind of crazy evil villain could possibly steal all of my trapezoids? Well, I only have one trapezoid, but... Oh. Ah! It's Croco, the evil villain. Mm. Oh. Yes, it's me, Nigel. Who do you think would have stolen your trapezoid? Huh. Well, I don't know, Croco. But I figured it was you after I saw your gnarly teeth. Mm. Well, you have to follow the clues to figure out where your precious trapezoid is at. Can you do that? <laughs> do you not know who I am? I am Nigel, the math explorer. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, I will accept your challenge, Croco, and I will find my trapezoid, and I will... Be victorious! Alright, we've got to find clue number one. As we look for clue number one. Oh! I see it over there! Follow me! Huh? There it is! Come on! Come closer! Mm. I'll reach into my man satchel! No, 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 no! We've worked on this! This is episode two! You should know what the word closer means. Come closer, but not too close. Right there, good, stop. All right, so what we'll do is we look inside my man purse and I find my handy dandy whiteboard. Huh. This triangle, we need to find the area of this triangle. So we have a handy formula we use for area of a triangle. Do you know what that formula is? Good. Well, even if you don't know it, so for some of you that said no, or you said, eh, oh, I'll tell you the formula anyway. Okay. The formula is A equals one half base times height. I'll say that again. A equals one half base times height. Please, please, please say it with me. I equals one half base times height. We have two pots. We have the base and we have the height. And like my one friend, um, whoever that girl is, it's all about the base. 
It's about the base that's all about it. Yes, so we're gonna have the base first, which equals 10. So I'm gonna take that 10, and I'm gonna plug it in to my base, which is the B, huh, big surprise. Okay, so I'm gonna have A equals 1 half times 10. I'll plug it into the 10. And I'm also gonna plug in my H, my height. So my height, looking at the triangle, is what do you think it is? Good, it's 12. It's really the only number left. <laughs> so silly. So silly. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna plug in the 12. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to multiply all these numbers. Pretty easy. What I always start with, and really, you might be saying, Nigel, what do you start with? And you can just wait, because I'm going to tell you. I start with the two bigger numbers, which is pretty easy. We're going to take 10 times 12. Okay, 10 times 12 is 120. What's 10 times 12? Good. Good job, students. Man. I thought I had quick learners over in Australia, but you're really quick here in America. Okay, so looking at this, now we're going to take one half times 120. So think about this. Let's say, what does multiplication mean? Do you know? Good, it means groups of. So we're saying one half groups of 120. Or I can shorten it up a little bit and I can say half of 120. It's amazing how much that is awesome. It really is awesome. Half of 120, which is what, students? Good, it's 60. So my area equals 60. Now, as far as the label goes, we have to be really careful to make sure we put the right label. Let's talk about area. Here is a square foot. What that means is one foot by one foot. You know, a funny thing about area is that it's amount of space. Yes. Can you say that word with me? Space. Now, let's say you go out for a walk, and you're walking for miles and miles and miles, and you walk for 255,000 feet. That's an amount of distance. Area is an amount of space. So when we say square feet, we're not meaning feet like this, we're meaning feet like this. So one square foot is a foot by foot. Thanks, Nigel, for that mini... <laughs> it's weird because I'm saying hard on myself and thanks to myself, but that's okay. Thanks, Nigel, for that mini lesson. We found out the answer to clue number one was 60 inches squared. Or we might also say 60 square inches, which is basically one inch by one inch. So, we have solved clue number one. Take two. You might have got lucky with clue number one, but... I doubt you can solve clue number two. Huh. Interesting clue. What do you think in the school may have something with numbers on it? Hmm. What do you think? Hmm. Why do you, why do you keep moving the camera? What do you think? <gasps> what did you say? No, you. You in the front row. What did you say? Oh, yes! Lockers! Very good! So, the answer was 60. Let's look for a locker that has the number 60 on it. Let's start over here. Huh! 60! I'm guessing the clue is inside locker number 60, which just happens to be this locker right here. Now, luckily, I talked to a teacher in the school named Mrs. Dumer, and she has given me a key to all the lockers. I don't know why Mrs. Dumas would do that, but here is the key. So let's try to open up locker number 60. I'm so nervous. Are you nervous? I'm so nervous, my facial hair is just falling right off my face. <laughs> oh, look, clue number two. Let's go ahead and solve clue number two. Come on, follow me and solve the lock. Oh, come on, come on. Yeah, okay, then let's, let's, not, let's not go on the locker then. <laughs> Hand it down the whiteboard. We are going to find the area of this circle. So, for area of a circle, we have an easy saying. 
And that sign is I pi r squared. Say it with me. I pi r squared. Okay, so write that down with I pi r squared. Now let's think about this for a little bit. Think about a pie. My favorite pie is cherry. What's your favorite pie? Mmm, those are tasty too. Now, so think about a pie and what shape is a pie? A pie is a... No, 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 no. A pie is not a circle. A pie is a square. Right? <laughs> no, it's not. But here's the saying that we have. A pie r squared? No. A pie is round. Hmm. So let's look at our equation. Mm -hmm. I pi r squared? No. A pi is round. Makes sense, right? Our circle has a radius of 8.14 or 8 and 14 hundredths centimeters. So we're going to take that radius and we're going to plug it into our equation. So we have I equals 3.14. Now a funny thing about 3.14 is it stands for the number pi. Okay, now it really goes on for a long time. 3.14159263. Okay, but we're going to put just 3.14. Okay, the radius is going to be our 8.14 centimeters. So we're going to plug in 8.14 centimeters. Hi. Hi, how are you doing there, little minion? Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to solve this equation. Now remember Aunt Sally from a long time ago? Well, you may not remember her, but I remember her very well, okay? Me and Aunt Sally go way back. <laughs> we went to high school together, I was graduating class, she was most likely to be successful, I was most likely to be handsome and done, daring. <laughs> but we look at this and we plug in the numbers and we follow Aunt Sally's rules. And Aunt Sally says, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Okay, we have some exponents, so we do those first. Now the weird thing is 8.14 is kind of a strange number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it in to my calculator. A giant calculator, <laughs> perhaps, will be the tool that will help us solve this problem. So, 8.14 times 8.14 equals... 66.2596. I'm going to go ahead and round that to 66.226. Okay, so write that down. 66.26. Now we're going to take that times pi, which once, we, once again is 3.14. So we're going to plug in this number and multiply those two together. Give me a good estimation for that answer. What should this answer be around? All right, we have a number close to 70, a number close to 3. 70 times 3 is 210. My answer should be around 210 when we do this correctly. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to multiply those two things together. We'll have 3.14 times 66.26 equals 208.06. So I equals 208.06. Now let's remember back to our mini lesson number one. What should our label be? Good! It should be centimeters squared. All right. So my answer is 208 and 600 centimeters squared. All right. Let's think about this again. What else in the school has numbers on it? Wait, what are you doing? What else in the school has numbers on it? Hi, hi. I don't understand where you're going. What else in the school has numbers on it? Oh, classrooms. Very good. So let's look for the classroom 208. Let's start there and maybe we'll just stumble upon the final problem. Go. 207. We're getting close. Where we've arrived, 
annoyed, but it seems to be in some kind of classroom. I saw someone on the door said Mr. Dubos. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> okay, so looking at this, we have 208. I bet I can figure out where the six is at. I'm gonna look around and mosey over here. Come on. Oh, I see a lot of numbers over in this area. Come on, let's go over here. Oh, look. These all have numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six. My number was 208.06. So I'm in room 208, and this encyclopedia has a six on it. Interesting. Let's look inside and see what we find. Hmm. Academic American Encyclopedia. Now it's American, that's okay, but it's still, it's a good quality information. It's probably dated, let's see what's dated. Hmm. 1989, so pretty recent. Who needs the internet? <laughs> okay, looking at the encyclopedia. Oh! <coughs> I found the final clue. It's not Mr. Trapezoid, but it is a trapezoid, and it has the different coordinates on it. Not really coordinates, but length. <laughs> Who needs math terms anyway, right? There are different lengths and all those. Okay, so, now let's look at it. Trapezoids are kind of interesting. They have two bases. Yes, you heard me right, two bases. Right here is base, and right here is a base. It doesn't matter which one's which, but we know they have two bases. Okay, our height of a trapezoid is always perpendicular to the base. So perpendicular basically means 90 degrees. That's not basically exactly what it means, because I am a mathematician. Okay, so we look at our dotted line right here. That is the height of the trapezoid. So we have base, base, and height. So now let's use the formula for area of a trapezoid. Our formula is this. I can you see it? I don't know. I equals one half times height times base one plus base two. It looks really complicated, but it's not that bad. Hm. All right, so we're gonna plug in the numbers. So first, we plug in the height. Our height is eight feet. So I have I equals one half times Height. Okay, now I'm going to plug in base 1 and base 2. Now because we're adding them together, it doesn't really matter which one's which. So I'm going to choose 18, ooh, 18 as base number 1. So base number 1 is 18. Base number 2 is going to be my other base, which is 12. Okay, remember our Aunt Sally? Because I do. Looking at this, we're going to do the parentheses first. So parentheses are 18 plus 12. Now, thinking about that, I could easily figure this out, and I know that this equals, I know this equals 18 plus 12, and 8 plus 2 is 10, 10 plus 10 is 20, so 20 plus 10, that equals 30. So we're going to have the 30 right here. I'll have one half. Notice I'm showing my steps. Now, if I know Mr. Phillips correctly, he wants you to show his, your, not his, your steps. Steps are the single most important thing in mathematics. Steps, steps, steps. Now what's the most important thing? Good, steps. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep on going here. Now I think it's easier to do half of eight next. And really because of the commutative property of multiplication, I can do whatever I want. So I'm gonna do one half times eight. Half of eight equals four. So. One more step and we are almost done. So now I have four times 30. So four times three is 12. And then we have the extra zero. So four times 30 is 120. So I equals 120. Now we're still doing area and it's in feet. So we're gonna do feet squared. So our answer for that trapezoid is I equals 120 feet squared. <laughs> Whoa! Very good, Nigel. I guess you've defeated me this time. <laughs> Did you ever doubt that I would, Croco? Yes, kind of. 
Well, I didn't because I'm an explorer. I guess... No, oh, wrong voice. <laughs> I guess I'll give you back your trapezoid. Till next time. <laughs> Finding you here. Well, I just want to say thank you because I could not have found Trappy without your help. Till next time, Math Explorers! This episode of Nigel the Math Explorer was filmed in front of a live studio audience. Hi. Hi.